From Montreal tonight, Quebec says raising gas prices is good for everyone. Drivers disagree. I think it's too much. It's like they, they think we're rich or what? A public health study warns some hot tubs can be bad for your health. And community leaders support Louise Arel, but not everyone in those communities is on board. People see, still see her as a separatist. More rain tonight, rain again tomorrow, stronger winds, better Sunday. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Hall. And I'm Andrew Chang. Our top story at this hour, could we be facing a big spike in gas prices? The Environment Minister is looking at boosting the province's gas tax by nine cents. It's supposed to help the environment, but many drivers think the province just wants to help themselves to their money. Kim Brunhuber has been gathering reaction for us today. Kim. Well, will there or won't be a tax? I've spent all day looking into this, and uh, Jennifer, I'm still not sure. Uh, the Environment Minister says one thing, the Premier says another. One thing that's certain, most motorists I talk to feel the last thing they need are higher taxes. They already feel drained and siphoned at the pumps. Now they're dealing with the news of a possible new gas tax. I guess like everybody else, uh, I think it's too much. It's like they, they think we're rich or what? Putting tax there, for me, it's another thing for the poor people. To fight greenhouse gases, Quebec's environment minister is proposing a new carbon tax, but still hasn't decided how much. It could be aimed at reducing emissions by up to 20% from 1990 levels, and that would have a direct effect at the pumps. The gas tax could climb from 4 to 13 cents. The idea here, says the environment minister, is to discourage hydrocarbon use without threatening the economy. But that's exactly what many Quebecers fear, especially those for whom cars are their business. The business going down uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, no, no good. But it is good, insist environmentalists. Quebec is one of the few jurisdictions in the world that may actually meet Kyoto targets. Activists say it'll cost us all more in the long run if the government doesn't set high reduction targets. Even the most ambitious, ambitious one that they're putting forward are a bit shy of what the international scientific community are telling us we need to do to avoid dangerous climate change. So it is ambitious, but we would argue that we need to do even more than that. The minister says most of the money raised through the new tax would go back to Quebecers indirectly through investments in things like public transport. Skeptics feel Quebecers are overtaxed already and are asking, when is it going to stop? Now you heard the environment minister trying to sell this carbon tax, but late this afternoon, the premier, who's in California, said, well, according to Canadian press anyway, that there won't be any new taxes to protect the environment. So I got on the phone and called the environment minister's office, and her spokesperson was unable to explain the apparent contradiction. She said she hadn't heard the premier's comments and that they're they're going ahead with their plan, which calls for public consultations between October uh, 22nd and November 4th. So it'll be interesting to see how the government manages to, to reconcile these two very clear yet contradictory messages. So we're looking at a carbon tax on one hand and no new environmental taxes from the Premier. Andrew? Oh, lots of questions on that one. Thank you. That's CBC's Kim Brunhuber with a live update for us tonight. Well, a nine-month-old baby was found dead, and Montreal police want to know why. The baby's mother called 911 after she found her son's lifeless body this morning in their home in Rivière-des-Prairies. The infant was pronounced dead on the scene. The mother is in hospital, suffering from shock. Now, Montreal police are treating the death as suspicious because of the boy's age and because the cause of death is unknown. But they say there are no obvious signs of violence. So if you spend some time at the spa or in a hotel in this province, you'd think a dip in the hot tub would be a great way to relax. Well, health officials say there could be a problem. An alarming number of hot tubs they examined weren't being well maintained, and they say they were contaminated with bacteria. Kristen Falco has been following this story and joins us now live. So Kristen explains some of the findings for us. Well, Jennifer, Quebec Public Health examined 95 public hot tubs across Quebec last year. They say a quarter of them had high levels of harmful bacteria in them that may not affect someone that's healthy, but if you have a weakened immune system, you do risk getting very sick. They're supposed to help us unwind and relax. And while they may help us de-stress, they may also be hurting our health. 
We found a high level of three types of harmful bacteria in many of the hot tubs, he says. Out of 95 hot tubs tested, 22% had Legionella bacteria, 41% had aeruginosa, even E. coli was found in some tubs. Legionella can cause respiratory problems if you have a weak immune system. There is no law in Quebec obliging owners to monitor public hot tubs, so your health depends on owners to keep their equipment clean and safe. Experts say the best way to make sure there's no harmful bacteria in the hot tubs is to have a computerized system that monitors the amount of disinfectant in the water. Only four of the 95 hot tubs in the study were equipped with this system, similar to the one used at Scandinavian Les Bains. So over here there's a process of continuous monitoring of the water quality by a computer that will monitor pH, temperature and chlorine level. It needs to be monitored continuously to make the proper adjustment because we don't want people to get sick in water. The study wasn't a big surprise to many Montrealers. When you look at some of the pools also that have the bad ratings, I guess it's something similar, right? I went recently and that's the first thing that came to my mind. But then you say, okay, well, let's hope the person that has this place is cleaning it. Quebec Public Health recommends that all hot tubs be emptied and cleaned once a week and that the level of chlorine be monitored every single day to ensure that there is enough to kill all of the bacteria. Now they do say that the bacteria won't hurt someone that is healthy, but if you do have a weak immune system, they say stay away from all public hot tubs. Andrew? Something to watch no, for. Jennifer, sorry. Yes, okay. Thank you. Kristen Falco with a live report tonight. Well, it is time for a check on the forecast with Frank Cavallaro. So, Frank, heading out tonight, should I bring the umbrella? You should, especially uh, before midnight, Andrew. We have a system moving in through the Great Lakes, already raining in Belleville, Ontario. Cloudy downtown, temperature 12 degrees, humidity 57%. As I mentioned, raining in Kingston, raining in Belleville, sweeping radar, picking up those showers, uh, and sometimes some heavy showers as well throughout the island right now. Cloudy skies, 12 for St. Laurent, Cote St. Luke, Westmount as well, 12 in Il Bazaar, cloudy skies. You could see distant precipitation approaching the West Island temperatures at about 12 degrees, 11 for St. Eustache, 10 in Mirabel, 11 in Boisbriand and cloudy skies, 11 for St. Leonard, Boucherville and Veren, South Shore temperatures, 12 for St. Constant, Chateauguay and 11 degrees, cloudy skies in Brossard, your exclusive 8 to 8, mostly cloudy. The showers should begin between 10 and midnight, continue in the overnight hours. The winds will pick up 25 to 35 kilometers per hour, especially around 5, 6 a.m., Showers to start your Saturday. These showers will begin to taper off gradually by tomorrow afternoon. We may even see a little bit of sun. It'll be milder. All the details for your weekend coming up in a few minutes. All right. Thanks a lot, Frank. After getting a lot of bad press in the English community today, Louise Arel is getting some strong support. Prominent black community leader Dan Phillips said Arel would be the best person to serve visible minorities in Montreal. But not everyone agrees. Others in the black community say her record isn't as rosy as Dan Phillip might think. Amanda Margeson reports. A warm welcome today from an unexpected supporter. The head of the province's black coalition is giving his vote to Louise Arel. And he wants others to do the same. I don't know someone who have advocated justice for the less fortunate than Louise Arel. He talked about how she fought so the Villanueva family would have the their legal fees paid in the upcoming inquest, plus the work she did on implementing a moratorium on tasers. His words clearly took the mayoral candidate by surprise. I'm very, very emotional this morning, and thanks, thanks a lot, because you know that in some uh, newspapers, they depicted me as a witch. But with help from this group and an English website entitled Friends of Louise Arel, the politician says she's finally looking like a good person. But Montrealers will have the final say, and not everyone in the city's black community wants to be aligned with her. People see, still see her as a separatist, and people still remember that she was part of the people who engineered this One Island, One City movement, correct? So. They're still there. And look at the, look at the, the havoc it, that damn stupidness caused. And the money... Like Alexander, the leader of Montreal's Haitian community, told us by telephone he is, for the first time, not supporting Arel. Keder Hippolyte says he's still angry she referred to the city as an ethnic enclave. 
Their comments, Arel has maintained, were overblown. I'm very able, uh, you know, this morning to, uh, to, to build a bridge with uh, many, many communities. As for the politics of language, Dan Phillips says Montrealers share the same issues, if not the same language. When we are, when we are so caught up with, is she speaking enough English or enough French? We are deviating from the fundamental problems. And one of the major issues in this election campaign is definitely going to be voter turnout. Last time, only 30% of Montrealers came out. So regardless of where the support comes from, the more people the mayoral candidates can recruit, the better. Amanda Margeson, CBC News, Montreal. Quebec's municipal elections are less than a month away, and if you're thinking of running, well, you better make sure your papers are in. The deadline for filing nomination papers passed at 4.30 this afternoon. Now, voters get a chance to cast a ballot at advanced polls on the 25th of this month. That's a Sunday, and the official voting day is November the 1st. You can get more information about voting in your city or town by visiting electionsquebec.qc.ca. Coming up, police thought they were responding to a fire, but when they got to this house, they found a little more than they bargained for. Plus, the coroner's inquest into the death of Freddie Villanueva may soon resume now that a new judge has been named to take over. Not as much rain as originally forecast, but you can see it. It's heading our way. When does it start? Details, seven-day forecast next on CBC News, Montreal at 6. The human face of tough economic times. It's just brutal out there. I mean, it's closure after closure. Inside one plant as workers battle to get one final payout. We're going to fight till we get every penny they owe. The Fifth Estate, tonight at 9 on CBC. Twice the calcium of most yogurts. Now with two free limited edition fridge magnets. From head to toe, Danino. From paint to plaster, tile to trim to drywall to decks, even remodeling. You can trust the pros at Handyman Connection to do it right, do it quick, and guarantee it in writing. Call Handyman Connection at 1-800-88-HANDY and get the things you want done, done. Introducing the all-new Chevrolet Equinox. It's the most fuel-efficient crossover on the highway. Better than the Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, and even the Ford Escape Hybrid. The all new Chevrolet Equinox. From the people that brought you Little Mosque on the Prairie, season one, on DVD, comes something like you've never seen before. Little Mosque on the Prairie, season two. Wow. Now available at cbcshop.ca and find retailers everywhere. The Hour with George Strombolopoulos, Canada's late night talk show. What George is doing there is called The Hook. Your exclusive pass to some of the most engaging interviews, the most fascinating A-list celebrities. Tonight, following The National on CBC Television. And we're back with our weather specialist, Frank Cavallaro. So Frank, we are very close to the weekend. What's it looking like? It looks like it's going to be a, a wet Saturday, Andrew, but not as wet as originally forecast because the system uh, has lost some of its moisture. However, we're going to see some rain right now at 613. Clouds over Montreal in through the Ontario border region. Already uh, precipitation approaching Belleville as you move into Kingston. Some showers, 11 in Audubon Park right now, 8 for saint jovit saint Sever, 10 in Mirabel. I want to show you the winds. And they're going to pick up as the system gets closer. We'll stop it at 2 a.m. We'll have winds as it changes color here at about uh, 30, 35 kilometers per hour. It'll be breezy as well tomorrow morning. And then once again tomorrow afternoon as it stays in the green here, uh, winds again 20 to 30 kilometers per hour. They'll begin to die down by 6 o'clock tomorrow. Right now, 6 p.m., the cloud has arrived. The showers are going to move in, I'd say, between 10 and midnight. The rain will move overnight and at times it will be heavy but by tomorrow morning at nine we'll have some drizzle or some rain as we stop it at nine and then you could see the breaks here look at these breaks they're going to move in tomorrow afternoon so a mix of sun and cloud and for sunday we'll enjoy cloud sunny breaks and with the sun coming out 
it will be milder. Today, 13 degrees. We could climb to 17, 18 tomorrow. 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, Montreal. You'll need the umbrella. Rain or drizzle, 11 degrees. At noon, showers, possibly some breaks as early as noon, maybe 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. 5 p.m., clouds mixing in with sun. A high of 17 with the winds from the south and southeast. It'll feel like 18, so milder tomorrow, a little soggy to start, and then sunny breaks tomorrow afternoon. Here's your seven-day forecast for Sunday. Not as wet as tomorrow. Some sun mixing in with the cloud. Fair on Monday, still an average high of 16. A little cooler, more sun than cloud on Tuesday. An average high of 15 on Wednesday, partly sunny skies. Another system will bring us some clouds on Thursday, and this system will bring us rain as early as Thursday night into Friday, it looks like it's going to be a wet Friday next week and cool nine, but this could change. It's a week away, so some rain beginning before midnight, continuing tomorrow morning, breaks in the afternoon. Right now, already some showers in through eastern Ontario and areas south of us. They'll be here before midnight, better tomorrow afternoon. All right, sounds good. Thanks a lot, Frank. A small fire at an apartment in the Petite Patrie led to a big discovery last night. Firefighters stumbled across a major marijuana grow up. 660 plants have been seized and a woman is now in custody. As Kai Nagata reports, pol police say luck plays a big part in busting these urban grow ups. This was the scene at 4 o'clock this morning. Fire crews responded to a call from a neighbor who had woken up to white smoke. Bad luck for the people downstairs whose apartment was full of pot plants. Because from the outside, there's not much to suggest this was a grow up. This upstairs neighbor says until this morning, he never saw anything or smelt anything suspicious. I wouldn't think that anybody would smoke pot if they're growing it. Usually it's for, for uh, to sell. And again, you know, it would be something that they wouldn't probably get involved with just because they don't want to attract any attention. Now, Cluche says this isn't the first time somebody's been caught growing pot at this apartment complex. He says two years ago, firefighters were called to a fire in this garage. While they were here, they happened to notice an extension cord leading up to the third floor and busted Cluche's next door neighbor. Another lucky break for police. Officer Andre Leclerc says 40 busts a year in Montreal come gift wrapped, courtesy the fire department. Sometimes they bypass the electricity panel, or, or and, and when it's done, incorrectly, it, it produces sometimes accidental uh, fire or any electrical problems. Aside from the skunky smell, police have a couple tips for detecting grow-ups. Look for bars or heavy curtains on the windows. Listen for noisy ventilation equipment. And make a mental note if you see a supposedly vacant apartment getting regular visits. Kai Nagata, CBC News, Montreal. Well, some good advice there. A new judge has been named to take over the coroner's inquest into the death of Freddy Villanueva. Quebec court judge André Perrault succeeds Judge Robert Sanfasson, who stepped down last week for health reasons. Villanueva is the 18-year-old shot and killed by police in August of 2008. Now, that shooting, you'll remember, sparked riots in Montreal North. The inquiry was suspended last spring in a dispute over paying lawyers. And now Quebec's public security minister says it will be up to Judge Perrault to decide when the inquiry starts up again. Coming up, a tragedy at sea for Canada's Navy. Forty years later, survivors of the HMCS Kootenay speak out about what they lived through. Plus, definitely not what you want your dog doing when he's riding in the car. Coming up on CBC News, Montreal at 6. Buckley's guy. Think Buckley's cold and sinus liquid gels relieve my aches, fever, and sinus congestion? Yeah. Are you more sure of Buckley's or your own identity? Buckley's. Buckley's cold and sinus liquid gels. They work. Neocitrin Extra Strength Daytime Total Cold and Flu Liquid. The effective medicine of Neocitrin in a unique warming syrup to provide soothing and comforting cold symptom relief. Neocitrin. Good to be back. I don't know about you guys, but I am hungry. Oh, you bet. What time's our table book? How do I wait for the restaurant? Here. Zero percent. Not just any zero percent. It's my Silhouette Zero Plus. Silhouette Zero Plus is more than a zero percent yogurt. Say goodbye to added sugar and fat. Say hello to skim milk, a source of calcium, and four vitamins. Silhouette Zero Plus. Do yourself some good. Eat. And try our limited edition strawberry and lychee or raspberry and dragon fruit flavors. At Dodge, we build fun houses. We build coolers. 
We build carefree getaways. I just wanna feel we build feel hidden chambers. We build the crossover that more Canadians love, Dodge Journey. Baby. Come see what we've built for you. Take advantage of our great offers when you dare to compare at your local Dodge retailer today. Lighting has evolved. Opt for new Energy Star qualified light fixtures. They consume up to 75% less energy. CBC News The National. Now, seven nights a week. The Canadian perspective. More often. CBC News The National. Tonight on CBC. That is a look at the day's closing numbers. You're watching CBC News Montreal at 6. Well, the markets didn't like this news this week. The road to recovery in the United States experiencing a few detours. The U.S. economy was expected to lose about 180,000 jobs. Instead, there were far more layoffs. 263,000 jobs lost in September. That's 46% more than expected. That puts the jobless rate at 9.8% and it's expected to hit 10 before it starts to fall again. Survivors of Canada's worst peacetime naval accident are speaking out. The HMCS Kootenay was a Canadian maritime disaster with forced burials at sea and across the ocean. Now, survivors are saying farewell. Adrian Arsenault was at today's memorial. This meticulously kept cemetery in Surrey, England, is filled with Canadians. Every one of these gravestones belongs to Canadians. Four in particular belong to crew members of the HMCS Kootenay. Nine crew died on that ship 40 years ago this month when there was a fire in the engine room just as the ship was off the coast of Britain. It was the worst peacetime disaster in Canadian naval history and it happened to a young, inexperienced crew that performed acts of heroism that are still admired in the military today. But the survivors didn't talk much publicly about what happened. All these years later, that's starting to change and today, for the very first time, some of them have come back to Britain to visit the grave sites of their call. Sunday they'll be in Plymouth to remember those who were buried at sea and also to thank those in Britain who helped with the remarkable rescue. A lot changed because of the Kootenay. It was the last time Canadian Forces members who died overseas were by policy forced to be buried overseas. Since that time, families have been able to bring their dead home. It was also the case that at the time, the survivors weren't offered any psychological counselling. That, of course, has changed now. But for all those men who had no one to talk to then, it still hurts. You didn't talk about it. You guys didn't no, talk about no, it. I uh, just didn't do it. And, uh, and now, in the last year, we've done a lot of talk, a lot of talking about it. And I find I, I, I get very emotional. And I, I can't believe it. I mean, <coughs> My wife and daughter can't believe I get emotional. It's a, I never talked about it. And, you know, they thought it was a nothing thing. The legacy of the Kootenay is of lessons learned. After the disaster, there were changes in fire safety regulations, changes in emergency procedures, and changes in the way the forces dealt with survivors and their families. And even now, for the extended Kootenay family, it's clear that the learning and the healing still go on. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Surrey, England. And closer to home now, the 2010 Winter Games are being held in Vancouver in just a few months. Now a new controversy, this time over Canada's Olympic apparel. Some say the team's insignia looks a lot like the Conservative Party logo with a capital C. Oh, so we'll show you the two of them together, you be the judge. A liberal critic says the logo should be redesigned, but the Conservative government denies they've had any hand in any perceived similarity between the two logos. Sure looks similar though. Up next, an eye-popping pet stunt, call it canine car surfing. He's definitely riding the wave, but don't try this at home with your pet. You're watching CBC News, Montreal at 6. 
Stay tuned. Coming up on CBC Television, find out what the neighbors are up to on Coronation Street. Then buy a valve, spin or saw. On Wheel of Fortune. And at 7.30, join me, Alex Trebek, for Jeopardy on CBC Television. Tame your jungle with Jeep Patriot. Class leading fuel efficiency, wild features, and legendary Jeep capability. Discover more at Jeep.ca. USA Today raves. Capitalism, a love story, is impassioned and entertaining. Michael Moore is filming me right now. Even Forbes says every tax paying American needs to see this film immediately. Capitalism, a love story. Now playing. Relax, enjoy, discover. Get the full paradise experience. Discover Mexicana's extensive route network to all the fabulous destinations in Mexico and Latin America. Fly nonstop to Mexico City from Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Montreal, and Toronto. Enjoy Mexicana Airlines' great service with complimentary bar and hot meals. Check in two bags for free. Enjoy Mexico and beyond. Nobody knows Mexico like Mexicana. For ten thousand dollars. Well, a great homegrown story to tell you about. A Quebec cheese has been named best in the world. Le Cendrillon is a goat cheese, and it's made in Portneuf, right uh, in La Maison Alexis de Portneuf Incorporated, a subsidiary of Saputo Cheese. We do make good cheese here, oh. and it was awarded the top overall prize at this year's World Cheese Awards. So, congrats. The awards were handed out last night in the Canary Islands. Now, for this next story, we certainly aren't in the habit of promoting dangerous behavior on our broadcast, but this we just couldn't resist. Check out this daredevil dog. His name is Max, and he likes to get on top of his owner's truck, apparently, and stay there every time they take a ride. Max has to be pretty balanced, carefully taking wind, speed, and other <laughs> such hazards into account. My instincts tell me I want to put a seatbelt on the guy. <laughs> the police have warned the owner about the dangers of the stunt, but he says as long as Max likes doing it, I guess he'll let him stay up there. And you gotta hope there's not no sudden gust of wind either, because yeah, that could be yeah, like trouble. the looks of that one. So Sandri Lyon, best uh, goat cheese in the world. Best yes, in the world. Yes, we must get some of that for our next wine and <laughs> not, cheese party. Not <laughs> bad at all, really. <laughs> Uh, clouds uh, over the Montreal region. Uh, showers should be here uh, between 10 and midnight. You can see the showers in through eastern regions of Ontario. 8 p.m. tonight, still mostly cloudy, 11 degrees. Showers developing before midnight. 8 a.m., it'll be wet, 11 degrees at noon. Still some showers. But by tomorrow afternoon, you'll look up and say, what's that? That's a little bit of a sunny break. And a high tomorrow about 17, 18 degrees, your five-day forecast. Cloud, sunny break Sunday, fair on Monday, a little bit cooler Tuesday, but some sun and an average high Wednesday of 15 degrees, mostly sunny. So keep the umbrella handy from about 10 o'clock tonight till noon tomorrow. You were just waiting for that goat joke, eh? You're Back <laughs> to you. Must be Friday. And that is CBC News Montreal at 6 for this Friday. Have a great weekend. I'm Jennifer Hall. And I'm Andrew Chang. We leave you now with the sights and sounds from the party in Rio, where the Olympic celebration will no doubt go on for days. Rio de Janeiro. <laughs>